Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Hoops with myself, Ben, and Jamel. How you doing? Man, I'm all right, man. I've been on cloud, oh, not on cloud nine. I've been on, I've been in a different set of clouds, I should say, <laughs> uh, ever since um, the Knicks got Mikel Bridges for a whole bunch of draft picks and a, a, and a bag of chips, you know, so... And they and they re-sign OG, but we'll talk about that later. Um, all as well in in my world for the time being. How how about yourself? Yeah, yeah, doing good, doing good. Um, was hoping that the uh, LeBron James and LeBron package would have came to Dallas, but it's not gonna happen. But uh, yeah, it's it's all good. Hey, Dallas had the chance to draft him, so they got blame themselves for that one. <laughs> true, true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So how do you feel about, you know, Bronny, you know, being one of the last picks of the draft? Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think he was a first rounder. I think he was a second round and more than a second round. He's a project, really. Uh, and I, so I'm not surprised that he that that's where he got picked. Uh, and there was reports out there. I'm sure you've probably seen it of uh, Rich Paul telling teams don't draft him or he's going to leave and go to Australia. Oh, I'm uh, sure I'm sure that shook up, you know, everybody's draft room. Yeah, the second round uh yeah, for sure. Uh but this, you know, this is you can go a lot of different ways with this, but he's going to get to play with his sons. So, I mean, that's that's a moment you definitely got to cherish, especially if you're a parent. But all the the back and forth and up and down and all the things coming out, it's 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 annoying, but the annoyance has just started. Don't worry. Oh, facts. You you know ESPN is is going to be on one knee this entire weekend, and uh, and um Skip Bayless. Good lord. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be Lakers ESPN. They're gonna make a whole new channel just for the Lakers for this one year because it is gonna be nonstop, and they just got a new coach. I and that and that coach had a podcast with LeBron. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't talk about the fourth grade legend coach, please. He <laughs> paid his dues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, a Lakers show. For uh, real, and then, yeah. And until there's a blockbuster trade, if that something like that goes down or a huge signing goes down, it's gonna be Lakers talk all summer long. You know, the thing about Bronny for me is, you know, while while I'm happy he gets to play with his father and 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 LeBron gets to play with him, um, he's not an NBA player and I'm just not hating on him. Like LeBron yeah, like LeBron has a year or two left. You know, Clutch runs the NBA, so as long as Bronny's with Clutch, I think he'll be okay. But you know, whether it's with the Lakers or elsewhere, he's not seeing a ton of minutes, especially this year. You know, he'll he'll play at the beginning of the season, especially during preseason. He'll definitely play during summer league. Right. And he'll play in those games that really don't matter. But most of his time will be in the G League. And I'm sure, you know, somewhere in the middle of November, the middle of December, he'll get that moment to play with his father during um garbage time. Yeah. Yeah. When they're when they're up by twenty or down by 20, uh, one or the other. But that the minute that, that he checks into the game, it's going to be crazy. If they both check into the game at the same time, sitting at the scorer's table, you know it's going to be crazy. Uh, but this is this is the first time this has happened since uh, Ken Griffey Jr. and Sr. And, but the difference is Ken Griffey was a, is a Hall of Famer or a future Hall of Famer if he's not one already. And Bronny got into the league because his dad is LeBron, LeBron James. Pretty much. <laughs> and they it, did the whole second day of the draft just for him and like dude wasn't even there. Right. Yeah. He was he was at a secure location, uh, whatever, calling out the, the picks. But yeah. I mean they I'm sure they got more eyes on the sec on the draft. Than they maybe have ever had, especially since they're having a, a second day, especially uh, for the second round. Right, 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 right. They're, and but you can't now. What they can't do is base this year off of 
you know, this is what it's going to look like because that second round, most people don't pay attention to it. So, and it was at three o'clock. Right. Uh, so, so like who's, who's paying attention at three o'clock? I know I was watching it, but, um, unless you have to, <laughs> like in my case, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like that whole thing was pretty sad. Like, I felt kind of bad for the second rounders because, like, some of them they didn't even get the whole draft experience. They got to walk through that dry ass NBA, I mean, not NBA, ESPN um, studio. So, like, no crowd, yeah. like, no people cheering them on. Like, I'm like, come on, man. They could have just had it like a regular one day event like they usually do. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, no need to uh, to even do that. I mean, just let people let let the the second round people just chill, or, or let them be there. Either way, but yeah, I, I hey man, feel like I, they I feel like they had to try to figure out a way to to make I'd this then, into something. I rather this than have those NBA award ceremony we like they had like right before COVID. So, like, if they had to have something just to fill that time slot, like, I'd rather be this. Because if they bring the, back them stupid NBA awards. <laughs> yeah, they probably are. And they're going to get somebody to host it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked. You uh, know. That, they're, they're, they're trying to compete. They're trying to compete with the NFL. And it's just, it's not going to happen. You know, my favorite storyline of the draft has nothing to do with basketball. Um, Kyle, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right. I'm sure I'm not. Filipowski from Duke. Yeah, yeah. Um, he got drafted by the Jazz, and apparently his mom and his brother went on Twitter and revealed his girlfriend, who is 29 or 30 years old, groomed him into Mormon culture and cut him off from his family in a series of tweets, allegedly. Wow. I should say. Wow. It um. <laughs> You know he's in the perfect place in Utah with sister wives and uh, and and uh, mom girlfriends and like all that other weird shit. So like yeah. I'm definitely following up on this story. This is right up by Ali. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's definitely uh that's drama right there, man. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. He's uh, but what what a perfect time, a perfect opportunity to crap on your son. On draft night, uh, yeah, that is wild, and she does look considerably older than him. Yeah, she's reportedly twenty nine or or thirty years old, and apparently his mom and his brother says um, he was brainwashed, and and the and a woman cut cut him off from from um from the family, and she had this plan since he was in high school, under age. Oh. Yeah, th- hey, this sounds like a Netflix documentary, like a three-part series. <laughs> Saving from the Mormons. Yeah, yeah, coming near you. Surviving the Mormons. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, so, you know, that's my favorite uh, storyline so far. Like, you know, I like the off-beaten path, like weird <laughs> shit. So <laughs> Yeah, this de- hey, that's definitely right up, right up your alley right there. No, yeah. no doubt, no doubt about that. Not that I'm into um, sister moms and um, and people like twenty and thirty years older than me, unless they're rich. Yeah. Other than that, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's sugar mama. I'm just here for the chaos. <laughs> uh, the the other story is man, Bob Myers, man, Bob Myers is getting a lot of run uh, lately. Uh, he was he was on the he was on the finals coverage, and then he's dropping reports of what Rich Paul is doing. Bob Bob Myers seems like he's a he's on the ESPN fast track. And honestly, I don't think he's gonna be at ESPN for that long. I think his heart is still in the front office, especially the way how how he built the Warriors. Like, if it wasn't for the economics of the game, he would still be there. So, honestly, yeah. I think, I'm thinking he's just waiting for a team to you know, break open the, that checkbook. Um, a team like the Wizards, like, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, that should have been the first call that they made a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah, he'll he'll definitely get that opportunity. You know, somebody's gonna get fired or let and, go. And look, he's a white man, so you know he's not gonna. <laughs> yeah, he's he not gonna go without a job too long. Yeah. And is and is and it's not like he's starving. I'm pretty sure he's making a handsome sum of money over at the worldwide leader over there. Four, four letter network. Mm -hmm. You know, before we get off the beaten path here, you know, the draft just concluded. You know, who do you think is the winners and the losers? To me, like the biggest winner is the Timberwolves. Like they just came from the Western Conference Finals. I believe they had um, the third seed in the playoffs due to a tiebreaker with OKC and Denver, and they still made out with projected, well, yeah, he was a projected lottery pick, Rob Dillingham from um, UK, and took him, and to, um, he's basically the replacement for Mike Conley. And that dude yeah. is elite. Mm. Like him, yeah. and, like him and Reed Shepard, I'm still, I, like I still don't know how Coach Kyle lost with that backcourt. Yeah, I, I think he was. I think he something happened. And I think he was done, and so he was. Yeah, that's what that since he left so quickly, I think it was, he was just. I'm done. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't love me. Y'all don't <laughs> love me like that. So I'm, let me go ahead and get out of here. You know, and another team I kind of got my eye on is the Portland Trailblazers with their draft pick. They um drafted my good friend Donovan Klingon from. From UConn, yeah, and um, they already have a log jam up front with DeAndre Ayton, probably the most overrated big in the NBA. Um, so I think that's that's a possible replacement because because they can't really play together. I mean, or well, maybe they can, but you know they just gonna get cooked in the front court because they're gonna be too slow. Yeah, but um, yeah. So just from that draft. Selection, I think Aiton might be on his way out somewhere, possibly to a team that can rehab him. You know, with the Suns, he wasn't even all that bad, to be honest with you. I can see why Monty Williams really didn't like him too much. You know, after seeing him his last year in Phoenix, plus the few games that I've seen him play in Portland, because I'm, cause I'm not staying up that late to watch West Coast games anymore. Yeah. Especially the Blazers, but yeah, um, I think he's on his way out. And the Hawks, like, I don't know what the hell they're doing. That franchise, yeah. no direction. They don't know if they're coming or going. And their first round draft pick, Zachary, I'm not even sure if I'm saying his last name right, Reesher. Yeah. Rashar. Um, like, he just seemed like, oh, damn. He, like, he had the doom and gloom look on his face. Like, he's like, he has to go to Atlanta. Like I know the team is in disarray, but hey, at least you got Magic City to kind of compensate for it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get it either. Uh, I think they're just in a whatever mode. Uh, and and the fact you took this, you know, no shade on the kid, but you took him number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, interesting. And and they still, they still haven't made, you know, that that. Uh, that key trade that they need to make with uh with Trey. So I mean like what are you you know what are you doing? You know, there's been reports that Trey is on the block too. So like Yeah, I I thought they were gonna trade him before the draft. So I don't know. It's if like you would if you would have made a trade, I mean you would have possibly got some picks, at least one. Like I said, I think the Wizards and the Hawks are just running a team on simulation at um yeah, At, auto auto autopilot. Yes. Um another winner of the draft, I think, who made out pretty good was the Spurs. You know, I like that little pairing that they're gonna have with Castle and um Wimby. Yeah. I kind of like Reed Shepard and Houston, you know, he's probably like the best three point shooter in the draft. Like Houston, they was hot garbage from from three point range last last year. Um they're good defensively and they're trying to make moves for KD, who I think wants a trade, but like, I guess don't know what's happening there. So that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. And then Harris, Harrison Ingram from uh, North Carolina got picked in the second round. He's a good 
uh, could, could potentially be a good solid player. So I mean, they they have four picks in this draft. So historically, the 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 Spurs hit you know on a on a couple. Mm -hmm. You know the one another team that kind of confused me was the Grizzlies when they selected Zach Eady, the slowest yeah. man. Like they're the, one of the fastest team, if one of the fastest teams in the league, and they picked the slowest player in the draft. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he's going. I, I feel like that was too early. I mean, at nine, you. I mean, I think you you probably could have waited, unless maybe the team called and said, "Hey, we're getting ready to take him," or something. But I I don't know how that's going to work out. He, he's very uh, slow and stiff. And uh, and maybe, or maybe people seen what what the Mavs did with Lively, but Lively's more athletic than Edie. So, right, at least Lively can move. Yeah, yeah, and the dude is I mean, seven four. So, uh, and that that picture of him, uh, Ja, and somebody else that was in that, I'm like, that don't look. That look like the softest team on earth, right there. <laughs> Like you, like you can be seven four all you want if you can't move. Like if the team is on a fast break and like you're the last person to get back, like what good? Yeah, are you, actually? right, right. And now, especially in the modern NBA, where most centers play out, like they like most centers don't even play in the post anymore. Like he's gonna be barbecue chicken. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be a wrap. It's gonna be a wrap for him. I think I think one of the biggest winners of the draft is the the G League Unite. I mean, they had, I mean, they were that was the top five pick, Ron Holland. The second, he's the he's from he's a Dallas area product. So going to the Pistons, but Ouch. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be uh, very very interesting right there. But uh, they had, had quite a few picks, I think, uh, and I think too the NBA wants to show that hey, this is this is working, and this is our you know solution to not drafting guys straight out of college. I mean, straight out of high school. Um, and then I also I'll go with uh, I'll go with the uh, the Kings, and mainly because of their second round pick. Uh, Jamal Sheed, he's a Houston uh, product. So I mean, you know, it's it should be should be a, a good upcoming season for them. I know Fox hasn't signed, re-signed, or signed an extension, but if they can keep that team together, I think they they got a chance to to compete again this upcoming year. And how about um Sam Presti and OKC? They hit the jackpot again with Nikola Topic. You know, I've seen him play a few times. Like, this dude's elite. And even before he tore his ACL, I mean, like, they got rid of Giddy. And obviously, he's not going to play this season. He's going to be rehabbing. But, you know, I think they should just let him rehab, play next season overseas just to get his um, jitters back, and then, you know, the following year, they'd be up and running again. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree. I mean, they're, uh, they said the, the he has shades of Luka and, and Goran Dragic. And so, if he's anywhere near either one of those, I mean, he'll be a great addition. You know, one of my favorite moments from the draft was um, when the Knicks drafted Frenchman Pat Gom. I, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it, this last name. <laughs> I mean, he's not French. He's from Germany. There's just too many Frenchmen that was drafted this um, year. Pause. <laughs> but uh, they had Pat Gom, Pat Gom, the audit. And when they... And when the camera panned to Steve Day, he's just shaking his head because, like, he didn't know who he was. <laughs> yeah, Steve A. Yeah, Stephen A. Probably don't know who half these uh, these players are. And that this was just a different draft, but it wasn't uh, a Wimby. It wasn't like a huge standout player. And you know, Tom is going to tell if, if any of these guys will 
be stars in it. And they they talking about the fifty fourth pick more than they're talking about the first. <laughs> right. There was more focus on the second round than there was on the first. Exactly. That, that's that's a crazy day <laughs> for the NBA. Exactly. And um one interesting nugget that I've seen about this draft that this is the oldest draft since twenty ten with an average age of uh, 21. So, like, mm. more kids that are staying in school are being drafted. So, that's good to see. You know, I like to see kids, like, um, who stay in school, like, don't get penalized because of their age. Yeah. And then maybe maybe the game is, is uh, not changing, but maybe it's the, the old vets, if you will, are getting a little bit more. Uh, more uh, praise, um, with, especially with Edie being drafted that high. That that I didn't think was going to happen. Um, and I think an, another another thing, we had quite a few German players drafted. I don't remember the last time there was any German, uh, maybe, uh, uh, what was his name, Timothy Mozgov, or uh, that's the only German, I mean, I could really think of recently. Uh, he was from Russia. He, oh, he well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't count either. But yeah, you had Germany, you had uh Africa, obviously France. So if yeah. if the NBA has a focus on international, which I believe they do, it's clearly working. And I hate to sound like a right wing Republican here, but American born players, they better start paying attention because these international players, they're coming and they're taking all their jobs. And, oh yeah, and they're just making it harder for American players to be drafted into the NBA. And let's be honest, these international players they're more skilled than American yeah. players. They work on everything. The problem is in America, if you're seven feet uh, with a guy like Edie, like they'll just teach you post moves, defense, how to rebound, stuff like that. If Edie was like say born in and or played in maybe like Serbia, he'll be like Jokic for, for crying out loud. Yeah. 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 No, no, you're right. You're right. They're more versatile. They can do more things. And that's a, a bigger contribution to the team. And so, yeah. Yeah. They, they better get it together. Cause it's, uh, it, this draft time. is heavily uh, international. Even, even if the players were drafted from a college, they're still international because they came from somewhere else when they came to college. But yeah, congrats to everybody that was drafted. Congrats to undrafted who signed a two-way deal. Um, some of those players I think might be better than some of the players that was actually drafted. You know, for me, I like the undrafted pool because like you never know like I, who you're going to find. So, yeah, just because you didn't get drafted, the journey's not over yet. So, Summer League is coming up in a week or two. So, I'm kind of excited to see. And ESPN, they already got the Lakers in prime time. Oh, yeah. Oh, something like, oh, I'm like, that didn't take long. Five minutes after the after <laughs> boy got drafted. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were like, yeah, go ahead and get that, that, uh, that tweet ready. And as soon as he gets drafted, go ahead and hit enter. Lakers and Rockets, 730. <laughs> That's what they had here. Uh, all Lakers game will be prime time. I don't oh, care. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah. It's the Oscars now. Nah, put put the Lakers on prime time. They'll be like the fever of, of Vegas. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, and since he since high school, I mean, he was getting a lot of publicity. So it's now gonna be times a thousand. I mean, going to the Lakers, we all know the media storm that that is. So you got two Jameses there. And especially wow. if, especially if he get cooked during summer league, boy, he he he's gonna have a target <laughs> on his back. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, that's he's gonna be a meme. Uh, the highlights are gonna be crazy. So if he does good or bad, it's it's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be poster material. You know, speaking of memes, I saw a meme that said LeBron is um tagging one of his teammates' moms. <laughs> That's good right there. That's good. 
That's good. You know, so um, before the draft, there was a big trade in the NBA. Um, the Knicks, they freed Mikel Bridges from prison. <laughs> and um, they acquired him for a couple of, well, not more, it's more than a couple, five draft picks, some pick swaps. And for whatever's left of Bogdan, but Bob Janovich. Yeah. Of his injury, um, me personally, I think they gave up too many picks. Even though they still got a lot left, I mean, it's not like they traded for KD. Like, even though he does fit Tibbs, he was, I think, he was all defense one year. If I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. I, I might be wrong about that one, but um, but yeah, he's um reunited with his college teammates. You know, um. They just re-signed OG. Hartenstein, he's probably gone. I hope he goes to OKC. Kind of rooting for the black man. Yeah. Um, the Knicks, they still got Mitchell Robinson, but you know, their roster that they're constructing is to compete with the Celtics. Cause like all the moves that they made is basically to contain all the Celtics wings and how the Celtics team is currently constructed. And I think fully healthy, and I'm not, and I'm just not being a homo in this one. Fully healthy, I think this Knicks team can beat the Celtics in a seven game series. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this health is going to be the biggest, biggest question mark. But if they can be healthy, yeah, I can see them definitely beating. Well, tell that to Tibbs because you know how he <laughs> operates. Yeah, yeah, but I I think this this trade I think was huge. Bridges is two way player, a lot of skill, and he's he's gonna be a great contribution. You know, when the, when he was with the Suns in that in that playoff run, you could see the, you know, he was really the third best player on that team. So, mm -hmm. and then on Brooklyn, he looked like he was in in prison for some reason. I'm like my I'm like my guy, you're still in New York, so like relax. <laughs> right, right. But ha man, having this many Villanova players on the team, uh, I think that them reuniting, yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun for them for sure. Hey, I'm 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 waiting for them to dig up Eric Pascal from uh, from some <laughs> he was in the jazz a, a couple of years ago with um, Donovan Mitchell. He wasn't all that bad, to be honest with you. Like, I don't know why he kind of flamed out the league. Yeah, he, he's playing. Looks like he's playing uh, I'm the way international he's uh, somewhere. Like, yeah, he, he kind of disappeared off the face of the earth one year. I'm like, oh, damn, the Mormons got to him, too. <laughs> yeah, but hey, uh, he... he, he Get on the league minimum. I'm sure he'll, he'll come over there. And while we on the Knicks, I kind of like their draft pick. I, oh, damn. I, for, I forgot the kid's name. He's from Marquette. And I should know his name because I watched him like a thousand times this year. He kind of reminds me of TJ McConnell. This dude. Oh, okay. But I doubt if he sees the floor. But... Yeah. You're talking about... Uh... Number 11 from Marquette. I just can't remember his um, name. I'm looking him up here right now. Yeah, like, like this dude got so much swag. I remember he, um, Marquette was playing St. John's, and in the pregame press conference before, like, the game even started, he told him that there was barbecue chicken. And then he lit us <laughs> up with about 27 points on top of that. <laughs> Hey, yeah, you need hey, you need that swag. You definitely need that. So you're talking about Oso. I'm not gonna try to say the last name. Yeah, and he and he plays like TJ McConnell too. Like he can run an offense. You know, I just don't see Tibbs playing him because he's a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe garbage time. Maybe, maybe he may get some minutes there. He's gonna be with my boy Jacob Toppin. I've been Waiting for him to play for the flat for the past couple of years. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe now. <laughs> you know, it, he definitely uh, got play it down. <laughs> hey, that yeah, that'll be the, that'll be the team when they up by twenty, and he just clear the whole, clear the whole bench and bring everybody in. Yeah, him and his pops and his um brother, they from my same, we're from we're from the same neighborhood in Brooklyn, so like, so that's why I'm actually rooting for them like harder than usual. Pause. Yeah. And I kind of want them to succeed. But yeah, man. Free my boy Jacob Toppin. Free Cam Thomas too from um Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, yeah, while we on Brooklyn and while they um have their fire sale, where do you think Ben Simmons is going to end up in? Do you think that there's a market? For him? No. No. Uh... I mean, he has an expiring contract. So if anything, towards the all star break or the trade deadline, I think somebody will. Oh, somebody, somebody will, would, somebody will take him. But this is like this is the last ditch effort here. Like it, it's, I mean this this is it. This was the minute he passed that layup up in Philly. I was like, yeah, this this is a wrap, bro. This hear me out, or look, hear me out on this, because this might could work. Ben Simmons on the Mavericks. If Jason could use him like he did Giannis when. It, when when he was the coach with with the Bucks, the, does he the the problem is does Ben Simmons want it? Does Ben Simmons still want to play? Because his uh, his summer tapes be crazy, man. Him playing at the LA Fitness and the and the Lifetime Fitness all that. I, I mean, them them highlight tapes be great, but when it comes to the season, I don't know, man. He just don't seem like he's there. Look, I don't know I if that's think- something you can fix. I think Ben Simmons, he likes the NBA lifestyle and it and he's in the contract year, so that money's coming up. So this is my personal prediction. He'll start out the season in Brooklyn. He'll have somewhat of a comeback season. He m- might even look better than he has the past three or four years, even to the point where he's I'm not gonna say a borderline all star, but cu- a couple of notches below an all star. A team might trade for him. He'll play out the year, finish out strong, sign a a three or four year contract somewhere else. Then after that, he'll regress back to the Ben Simmons that we know and love. Yeah, that's the nature of sports. Any any sport when it's a contract year, that dude's gonna be the best in the best shape. He'll do whatever for the team. He'll be diving after loose balls, everything. Pause. <laughs> yeah. He, I, I agree with you there. I mean, if you if he wants to get another contract, he's gonna have to show that he can remotely still there's shades of of the old Ben Simmons in there somewhere. You know, and I think Jason Kidd could bring that out because I've been trying to think, okay, what what team in the NBA can utilize Ben Simmons to the best of his ability? So I was thinking the the Mavericks, um, the Spurs, maybe. Hmm. Hey, maybe, maybe that may be the best. Because if he, I mean, if you come on over there with Pop, man, I know Pop's older now, but Pop would probably get the best out of him. Yeah, I and just he, don't know if the Spurs want to be dealing with the headache. That's the only. Yeah, thing. that's a, that's a project. That's that's a distraction. So he may not want to take that on. And to get Ben Simmons, you have to make the money work. So. Like for them, for a rebuilding team, like I don't even think they have anybody that's making Ben Simmons type money for it, for him to like trade straight up. So they might have to get a third and fourth team involved for like a pet project for a couple months. So yeah, yeah. What's I'm gonna see? It's yeah, it's not a four year, twenty six million. But yeah, it's gonna have to be some. It's gonna have to be some big money. Now, if if it aligns. With uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., I I might take that deal. Then they ship him off somewhere else. Tim Hardaway, not not yet. They uh, they they're working on something, but no, nah, he's he's I still thought, on the Mavericks. I thought I saw that they had a deal in place or was close to it. There was something with the Pistons, but uh, they hadn't said anything yet. Poor Tim Hardaway. Like, I don't know what happened to that dude. 
He's just streaky. He's just all. He just all, always been that way. Like even He's been when, in the league. like even when he when he played for the Knicks, like he wasn't even like he was streaky, but he wasn't like this bad. Where he would like make five trades, but then like he, but then, but then you won't hear a peep out of him for the next six weeks. Yeah, and just just like the contract year situation. He he got an extension because he did well in that playoff run, uh -huh. and then the Mavs were like, "Oh man, this is this the guy we need." And the next couple of years it was roller coaster. Hey, the Magic could um, use him. Like they need shooting, and he'll be a low risk, high reward type of guy. You know, right. just, just a guy to come off the bench, you know, and kind of space the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think they kind of have their sights set on Clay Thompson. Uh, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a, a story of the summer. And then uh, Paul George, where do you think Paul George is going? I mean, is from his comments and the way that the Clippers are sound, it's kind of sound like he's just trying to cut bait with the Clippers right now because he wants to make more than Kawhi. I seen that the Warriors was interested. And him, I've seen a lot of people saying he can't play because he can't catch and shoot. But hey, like if KD can play with the Warriors in the same situation, like I don't see why not for um Paul George. Be honest with you, and he's a good replacement if Clay Thompson walks. Right, and and I mean the the Warriors, it don't matter. I mean they already saying they're willing to give him the max, so like the money isn't really the, the question. Is it if is it Paul George wants to go there. And I kind of like that fit too, to be honest with you. And I and I kind of like him with um with Clay and Paul George, but I don't think Clay is going to take a, a pay cut or even come off the bench. So Yeah, it's it's gonna end up being a a, a swap. And I think Clay just it's one of them just a change of scenery. He I mean he's been there a long time. He's had all these injuries while he was there. So, yeah, I just think he just needs a change of scenery. Hey, man, I, I kind of like Clay on the Lakers, too. But. Yeah, they got, that, that would be, yeah, that, uh, that would be interesting. The Lakers, Houston, Orlando. But, yeah. Poor old Clay. Honestly, Clay needs to go to a state where weed is legal. <laughs> that might get him back up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. We we may we may not see see that uh game six play anymore. This may, nah, I think, this may pass him. Nah, I think he still has a little bit left in him. He just needs to find that motivation and kind of come to grips to and understand he's not the same clay right he still can have vintage performances it's just not going to be on a nightly basis anymore yeah yeah i agree yeah you just you got to come to that realization that it's it's not kind of uh, like, what it used to be kind of like carmelo anthony when he elected to come off the bench with um houston right, right. it's kind of the same situation yeah he, he finally he finally got to that point as long as he don't go out like Iverson on the Grizzlies, I'm okay. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was that was sad to watch. Yeah, I, like I don't want to see Clay on the Pistons. Please no. <laughs> don't do that.